you want to repair your peeling clear coat and the pitfalls that you may run into, we're going to address all that. Watch on, watchers. When you have your clear coat so thick, and you can see the base coat still left here in the center, in order to get rid of that transition line from your clear to your base coat, you have to sand it until you just hit the primer and just hit underneath the primer. So that means I had to hit this harder. No way to get it without going over it. So now we've got the transition line sanded down and our Sweet Project Cars super soapy water. We've sanded it down with our 2000 grit and got it so that the ridges are down. You don't feel any of the clear that's going to be your biggest issue is seeing the ridge line as I mentioned. Now I'm going to be going over a lot of different things repetitively so I can really set in your mind. I'm first going to do it with a duplicolor paint matching to this and that's how most people will do it. Then I'm going to do it with a clear coat, base coat, base coat, clear coat, however you want to say it. But this is going to give you an idea what you can do at home. The first time you're doing it, Make sure you cover everything. The whole car, it's a convertible, so we have it covered in plastic. Acrylic enamel that we're going to be using is one that you can buy online to match the color of your paint. And then I'll show you how you finish it off. Keep your eyes peeled. First, we're going to clean it with a rubbing alcohol. This will get all the grease and oil off. Then we'll use, just, for, just to make sure, I like to go over it with a prep rag, and I think you should as well and a tack cloth. Now when you go over it with your prep cloth, you just wipe it on and that even assures more that you won't have any grease. And then wipe it all off with a nice clean blue shop towel. And you'll see the pictures that I put on how bad it actually looked prior to this. Now what I'm going to do is take my gray Scotch-Brite and go over it and just rough it up a little bit. Now we'll take our prep rag one more time. And remember, we're going to be doing this many different ways, but this is how most do-it-yourselfers would do it. Then we'll take our tack cloth. This will make sure there's no lint or dirt. So this is the first way to do it. And then the second way is coming up. Okay, this is the paint that we're going to be using. It is a perfect match by Duplicolor. And again, all the tools and everything you need will be in the show more of the video description. Now what I'm going to do is lay a coat over this, do a 50% overlap. So let's put our coat of paint on it and see how it works. Here we go. Now, as you can see, that is a pretty good match right there. Okay, so you did your paint job. Fixed your clear and you ran into some issues. How do you get orange peel? Most of the time you get orange peel because your ambient temperature is not high enough, it's not warm enough to allow the paint to flow normally. That's usually how you get orange peel. Not always, but a lot of the time. Acrylic enamel, it has the clear in it. As you see, the shine is really nice. We haven't even done anything to it. 
but there are, you can see where the peeling clear coat is. Okay, now if you want to avoid having the issues that I purposely created here with the ridge line, the transition line showing through the paint, spray just a little bit of primer on and do this right here. I'm going to share with you how well it shows up. We're using just straight water. You take your foam board, bend it to the curve if you have a curved panel, and go over it. Equal pressure. Very lightly. Two thousand grit. And I love these boards because like I said, they just curve right to the panel. And this is what you'll do to make sure before you paint, and I purposely didn't do this so I could show you and prevent it from happening. Now we'll wipe that off. And doing this, it'll show if you have the transition line low enough so you don't see it after you paint it. Let's get up there close to it. You can see the transition line right there. That's right where it was peeling. All right, so we put the run in the paint, correct? We're all there together on that. I sprayed the primer over so that I could see where the run was. This is where the run was. It went down, came back up. So I'm sanding it down with 600 grit, and it is currently higher than the primer. So we're going to keep sanding it until it's flush and gone. So if you get a run, don't worry, don't freak out. It's all okay. The run is gone, we sanded that out. Now folks, here's a rule of thumb. If you can see your imperfections in the primer, you will see it in the paint. The ridges, the indentation from where the clear was missing, I could have kept from doing all of this extra work, but like I said, it wouldn't have taught you anything. All right guys and gals, we stripped it all off, all the paint, all the primer, we are getting ready now to do the clear coat, base coat. We are now going to use our HVLP high volume, low pressure spray tool to do this next step. We wouldn't have had to primer this had I not made the purpose mistakes that I made on the other to show you. Spray your base coat at around 26 pounds. So we're going to put on two coats, let the first coat flash about five minutes till it's dull. You wanna make sure it's not tacky. You can touch your tape up here to see because you'll get paint on it. Don't touch the paint at all. Then we'll give it about 30 minutes or so, put a couple coats of clear on it. So let's get cracking. And you wanna test it, test out your your pattern on a board so that you can see how your pattern is going to be. I like this pattern right here. That's what I just put on. It looks good. So let's lay some paint. We'll do a 50% overlap. I'm going to put a heavier coat on now, just because I want to. Now that will dry dull, and it'll be cool looking because when you put the clear on it, it'll look really awesome.
All right, we let it set five minutes. It is about 70 degrees in here right now, and that's about where you want it because outside in Michigan right now, it is eight to 10 degrees below zero. So we're against the odds. Heating it up so you can get a uh, good paint job is the key. All your painting. We're gonna put a heavier coat this time. Fifty percent overlap. Just to make sure. Now we'll let that dry. Wait 30 minutes and we'll put our clear coat on. We put one heavy coat on, one wet coat, wait 10 minutes, put another wet coat on. You can do up to four coats if you want. So let's spray some clear. 28 to 29 pounds on your gauge. Fifty percent overlap. Okay, it's been ten minutes or so. Now what you want before you put your next coat of clear on, you want to make sure it's Dry to the touch, not tacky. So you don't touch the area you painted. You touch a tape line, like right up in here. And it's not bad. It's just a tiny bit tacky. Not bad though, pretty much dry. We're going to put another coat on it right now. Like I said, in the next video, we will do how to deal with orange peel. So I'm going to put this on heavy, hoping to get some orange peel out of it so I can do the next video for you and show you how to deal with that. gorgeous you can see yourself in it glad you're here with us come back again take care ladies and gentlemen